Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are on level six of lesson five for board events. Um, and we're going to do all of the activities because that's what you should be doing. You should do all of the activities. You should get all that practice in. I promise you it's going to help you quite a bit. Um, so let's get started with activity A. All right, it says debugging. The app below is meant to update based on how the user interacts with the board. However, the wrong events are displaying. Can you fix the error so the correct text appears with the correct event? So it says this is a label. And if we run it, all right, so it says button L. Oh, okay, so here, oh, so we got to change this. All right. Um, so before I even start running it, let's see what we have here. It says this is label. Um, oh, this label. Okay. So this label is what we're going to be changing and we need to change it to say the toggle switch is open. So we need to change button to toggle switch and we need to change down to open. All right, this is label, so we're gonna change that. The right button is down, so we need to change this to button R. We need to change it down, okay. It says the right button is up, so button R, we need to change that to up. This, the left button is up, so we need to change this to button left. The left button is down, we need to change this to button L, and we need to change this to down. Okay, and then the toggle switch is close, so that one is correct. All right, so we're gonna run it, and let's see how we did. So we're gonna start here, left button down, left button up, right button down, right button up. All right, toggle close, toggle open. All right, so it did everything that we asked it to do. I think we're good to go with this. So we're gonna click finish and go to the next activity. Um, so emoji reactions. Emoji reactions, make an app that starts with a neutral emoji on the screen. When the user presses down the left button, it changes to a happy face. When the user presses down the right button, it changes to a sad face. When the user lets up either button, it changes back to the neutral face. All right, we got this. All right, so let's tackle this. When the user presses the left button, show a happy face. So you see how we have these triangles right here? You wanna open these up because that's gonna give us some information. So use an onboard event block to detect when the user presses down on button L. Use a set property block to update the image of the emoji to a happy face. So we're gonna start here and bring the onboard event over. All right. Um, and we want to copy this. This is going to be important. So we're going to press con or control C and then we're going to come over to UI events and we're going to do a set property, bring that in there. So now we're going to change the ID to the face image. We're going to change this to image itself and then we're going to paste in that smiley face. All right. And so what will happen is if we run this, when I click on the left button, where is it? There we go, click. There we go, so click. All right, so it worked to bring it down, but because I didn't code releasing the button, it's just gonna stick there. So let's do, okay, the next part. We're gonna come in here, so it says, when the user presses the right button, show a sad face. Use an onboard event block to detect when the user presses down or, or on button R. Use a set property block to update the image of the emoji to a frown face. All right, so we're gonna set our onboard event over here. We're gonna set this to button R. And then we're going to come into our UI controls, put a set property button, and we're gonna once more change the face image. We're gonna change the actual image itself. And I'm gonna copy this right here for the frowny face. Press Control C. Come in here, press Control V. And reset. So now if I press the left button, click, 
we get a happy face. If I click the right button, click, we get a frowny face. Excellent. All right, now we have to code in the neutral face. So we're going to go to circuit. We're going to do an onboard event. And let's see. When the left button goes up, then we're going to have a neutral face. So we're going to go back to UI controls, set property. We're going to grab the neutral face, press control C, come down here and we're going to change the face image to the image. And then we're going to press control V. All right. So now if I reset it, I have the left button goes down. We see a smiley face. When I release that and the button goes up, it goes back to a neutral face. Excellent. So now we have to do that one more time for the right button. We're going to go to circuit. We're going to click on onboard event. We're going to go back to UI controls. We're going to add the set property. So now the button L should be the right button. So we need to change this to button R. We need to do set property and we're going to go to face image. We're going to click on image. And this one is also going to be the neutral face. So control V. All right. So if I did this correctly, if this works, all right, let's try this. So button L, when I press it down, we see a happy face. When I release it, it is a neutral face. When I click the right button, uh-oh, something is wrong. Something is not working. So let's go figure out what's happening. Um, I'm going to run it just one more time, make sure. Yep. All right. Something's definitely not working there. So let's figure it out. So where it says button R down, face image, image frown. Oh, look right here. So I did make a mistake on line 17. I have, and then line seven, both of them say button R down. Um, so I need to change this one to up. There we go. So let's reset it and run it again. So again, button L down. Good. We have a happy face, button L release and neutral face. Button R down. There's our frowny face. Button R up, neutral face. Excellent. So there we go. We've got everything we need for that level. We're going to click the finish button. Um, and, you know, like I say again and again and again, there is a teacher's manual. I could look, but I'm not going to. Nope, 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 nope. I'm going to do this with you guys. So I may make a mistake every now and again. And that's part of the process. Um, so this level or this activity is an LED blinker. And so create an app that simulates a blinker like on a car or bicycle. When the user slides the toggle switch open, the LED should start blinking. When the user slides the toggle switch closed, the LED should stop. So do this. Note, you can click the instructions below to expand them and see more specific instructions. We see the triangle, so we're definitely going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and open up the first one. When the toggle switch is open, blink the LED. Add an onboard event to detect when the toggle switch is open. Make the LED blink every 500 milliseconds. All right. So we're going to start with our onboard event. We're going to switch button L to toggle. And we're going to switch it to open. All right. And so now we're going to go to uh, LED blink. And we're going to switch this to 500 because that's what it's asking for, 500 milliseconds. And then let's open up the second one. It says when the toggle switch is closed, stop the LED from blinking. Add an onboard event to detect when the toggle switch is closed. Stop the LED from blinking. All right, so we're going to add one down here. We're going to switch this to toggle switch. And instead of open, we're going to have it closed. And then we're going to go LED off. All right, so we're going to run it, see if this works. Um, so I'm going to hold the board and find the toggle switch, which is right here. We're going to go to the right and then the left. All right. So when I switched it to the left and I opened it, now you can see that the LED light is blinking. Um, so now when I turn the toggle switch off, the LED blinker turns off. So that's exactly what we needed it to do. We're going to click on the finish button and let's move on to the next activity. All right, we got two more to go. 
so that oh this one's fun this is the morse code simulator all right so you could actually do morse code with the uh, circuit boards which is awesome so it says morse code simulator morse code is a system for communicating that uses long and short beeps to represent letters Create an app that uses the buttons to play beeps for Morse code. The left button should play short beeps and the right button should play long beeps. So do this. Note, you can click the instructions below to expand them and see more specific instructions. So again, with the triangles, we're gonna open the first one. When the left button is pressed, play a short buzz. Add an onboard event to check when button L goes down. Play the buzzer for 100 milliseconds. All right, so we're gonna open our circuit board. We're gonna bring over our onboard event. Uh, button L down, well, perfect. So now we're gonna go to LED, nope, we're gonna go to buzzer, all right, bring in the buzzer, and we're gonna set it for frequency and then length. So the frequency is 500, which is good. That's a, that's a nice middle, you know, sound. Um, and then we're gonna set it for 100 milliseconds, which is already set for, excellent. So now we need to open up the second triangle. When the right button is pressed, play a long buzz. All right, so we're going to add another on board. We're going to click um, right button. And then we're gonna add in the buzzer frequency. So instead of 100, we're gonna make this 300. All right, so run the app. And let's see uh, if this works. Yep, there's the short one. There's the long one. So now if I wanted to uh, do A, I would do one short and one long. So let's see. Okay. And if I wanted to do ooh, the S, so dot, 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 it would be, there we go. Um, so you can do a lot of really cool things with this. All right, but that works. So we're gonna click on our finish button. I'll let you guys play around with that. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, and we got one more to go. So practice our yes or no communicator. So yes or no communicator, create an app that uses the buzzer and the left and right buttons to represent answers to yes or no questions. For example, a high buzz could represent yes and a low buzz could represent no. Then use the buzzer to answer yes or no questions with a partner and see if they can understand your responses. So when the user presses the left button, respond with yes. Well, they kind of told us what we could do with a high buzz. Da, 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 da. So we're going to come over here to circuit. We're going to add an onboard event. It says presses the left button. So left button down. Um, let's do a buzzer frequency. Uh, that is high pitch. So this one we're going to make uh, 800. I try and not go above 800. You can go higher than that. but mm. And then, then you've got... 30 of these going off in a classroom and it gets a little Wah. okay um so then we're going to add this one so this one says click on the right button so we're going to change this over here and then this time we're going to do a buzzer frequency and this one is going to be low all right so there we go <clears throat> um so let's run it excellent and let's say uh do i teach computer science Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> do I live in the United States right now? No, I do not. Um, have I ever lived in the United States? Yes, I have. Uh, I've lived there all the way up until this year. So yeah, you can use these for yes or no questions. Um, you can't use them for more than that at this point, but we, you know, more coding, more advanced stuff. We're going to get into it. Uh, but that does our yes or no communicator. So we're going to click on finish. And then that also wraps up all of our activities. We've gone through all five. So with that, I will press the finish button and I will see you on level seven.